Believe it or not, San Martin watches are getting better and better. So is this new SN008 their best watch ever? Keep watching and you'll find out. Hey guys and welcome back to I Like Watches. Thank you so much for joining me for the review of this new and much anticipated watch by San Martin. This is of course the SN008-G, a homage to a very famous and well-known Tudor. Now San Martin sent me this watch for free, I don't need to return it. And that's why you've seen the includes paid promotion icon in the bottom left hand corner. But don't worry, I am still going to give you my fair and honest opinions. Along with the facts, figures, stats and specifications, I'll talk about the things that I like, potential improvements that I think could be made. I will pop it on some alternative straps and hopefully at the end of this video, you'll know whether or not you want to pick one of these up. And if you are tempted, I would love for you to use my affiliate links in the video description. My advice to you would be pop this watch in your basket and wait for the sale at the end of March. Thankfully, the cookies that associate this channel with your watch purchase in your basket last for 30 days. So if you buy this watch during the sale at the end of March, this channel still benefits from the much needed commission. And of course, I always give 10% of my AliExpress earnings to save the children. So I would love for you to use my links, but also I'd love for you to click that like button and subscribe. Right, let's crack on. Before we decide whether or not this is San Martin's best ever watch, we need to run through all the facts, figures, stats and specifications. This is a vintage inspired dive watch, the SN008-G, and you can pick it up from the San Martin official store on AliExpress. Now, there are two movements available with this watch, so the prices vary from $326 up to $456, that's £240 up to £336 or €276 Euros, up to €386. Euros. You can pay via PayPal. Their watches come with a two-year warranty and there are some options available. You've got two colour options, blue and black, the two movement options that I've just mentioned and also a sterile dial version. The choice of movements are the PT5000 or the Salita SW200. The PT5000 is a clone of the SW200. They both beat at 28,800 beats per hour. So the second hand tick eight times every second, 38 hour power reserves, they hack and wind. Unfortunately, San Martin didn't have any of these watches left with the PT5000 movement, so they sent me the one with the Salita SW200, aren't I a lucky boy? I'll pop this one on the time grapher. It's running at plus three seconds a day. Great amplitude, 313 degrees, and reasonable beat error, 0.2 milliseconds. According to the specifications, this watch is made of 316L stainless steel. I have also taken some measurements. The diameter is 40 millimeters. I measure it at 11 millimeters thick, lug width 20 millimeters, case length 48 millimeters, but you do have fixed center links on these end links. That takes the overall case length to 54 millimeters. I've also measured this watch on its supplied strap. It's suitable for people with approximate wrist circumferences of eight and a half inches, that's 215 millimeters, down to 6.6 .6 inches, that's 168 millimeters. I've had to remove three links to set it up for my seven and a half inch-ish wrist. It now weighs 134 grams, a fairly svelte figure. With those extra links added back in, it's 145 grams. It is a 200 meter water resistant diver. There is a mix of brushed and polished finishing on the case. The brushing on top of the lugs is circular as per the original watch. The brushing on the side of the case is longitudinal and you've got some very nicely done high polished beveled edges. The crown is a screw down crown. It's nicely finished with the shark logo. The case back is a very traditional case back. It's screw down, no details, no specifications, no signature. The bezel is a 120 click unidirectional divers bezel. You've got a ceramic insert with numbers, markers, and a loom pip, and it's beautifully done. I have tested the crystal. It is testing positive for sapphire. It looks like a piece of single domed sapphire crystal with AR coating. The dial, it's a black dial, but it looks more very, very dark gray to me. There's no finish to this dial, no sunburst effect or pattern. It's approximately 28 millimeters in diameter. There is a minute track printed around the outside of this dial. It's beautifully centered and lots and lots of loom. The hands are very much in keeping with the original watch, a set of vintage inspired hands. They're finished in a high polished gold finish. And again, lots and lots of loom. 
It's a three link bracelet, but you do have those extra high polished links on the outside of this bracelet. There is some tapered to it, 20 millimeters down to 16 and a half millimeters, back up to 18 millimeters for this clasp. There is a mix of brushed and polished finishing to this bracelet. You've got solid end links, solid links, and double-ended screw pins. This is fast becoming one of my favorite clasps. It's a three-piece, fully milled, beautifully proportioned and finished clasp. No diver's extension, but you've got four micro adjusts, double pushers, and a signature. I have been wearing this watch now for a couple of days. I've also gone over it with a fine tooth comb. I've taken lots of macro shots, so I know this watch very, very well already. And I'm happy that there are no quality control issues. So that gives me plenty of time to talk about the reasons why this could be considered San Martin's best ever watch. Firstly, it seems to meet a lot of the requirements or desires that came out of that survey I did a little while ago. The most popular case size, 40 millimeters. That's what this is, PT5000. That's what's in here, potentially, if that's the one you choose. It's a fairly accurate homage, but not a direct copy, which is, again, what people wanted. It's not a Rolex homage, which, again, is something people were asking for. In fact, 60 people in that survey specifically asked for a Tudor homage. So it is great to see a little bit more variety being introduced into San Martin's catalogue. And not only have they produced variety, but they have produced what I think is a beautiful watch. Now, I've spoken many times about the golden ratio. What is the golden ratio? Well, it's something that seems to appear a lot in nature. It's a ratio of 1 to 1.6, I think. And for some reason, we as humans find it particularly appealing. And that's why huge brands like Toyota, for example, use the golden ratio a lot when it comes to things like their logo. And I took a few measurements of this watch and I found four golden ratios within about two minutes. So it's clear to me that there is a reason I find this watch particularly beautiful. Proportionately, I think it's fantastic. And it's also helped by the fact that it is finished beautifully. I know I say it all the time when it comes to San Martin watches, but their finishing and build quality really is that good. I mean, look at these macro shots. You just don't get macro shots as clean as this from any other manufacturer on AliExpress. And in fact, I don't think I've been able to take macro shots as clean as this with any other watch I've ever reviewed. The finishing on the end links, where the center links meet the outer links, on this watch is almost perfect. And that's always a real troublesome spot. That's always where you will see sloppy manufacturing, but not on this watch. The transitions from the brushed surfaces to the high polished beveled edges on this watch as well look fantastic. Even under macro, they look almost flawless. And look at the engraving and then coloring applied to that bezel insert. Again, under the macro lens, it looks perfect. Now, normally with this sort of magnification, you would see lots and lots of little flaws here and there. But on this watch, I'm just not seeing them. And this level of finishing is evident all over this watch. It's not just here and there, it's on the case, the bezel, the dial, the bracelet, the clasp, the case back, it's everywhere. The loom on this watch as well appeared to be particularly strong. It could be the best loom on any San Martin watch I've ever tested. I will do a longevity test and post that on my second channel, I Like Watches too, very, very soon. As well as popping this watch inside of Herman, I will give it a uh, courtesy water resistance test, but I can't see there being any issues. I've not given myself much time really to talk about the bracelet and the clasp. Um, they're very similar, if not completely identical to the bracelet and the clasp that are on the SN004-G, the 38mm vintage watch. I loved them on that watch and I love them just as much on this watch. They are amazing. I mean, this bracelet, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but I really, really like it. I could literally sit here and talk about the strengths of this watch all day, but I really can't. I must talk about a couple of things that I think perhaps could be better or that they might want to change for the next one, perhaps. I posted the unboxing of this watch on I Like Watches 2, and there was some really interesting feedback. Quite a few people said the center links on those end links should be female end links and not male end links. And although I don't mind these end links at all, I mean, they are beautifully done, having female end links instead of these end links would open this watch up to potentially even more buyers because a case length of 54 millimeters. It's not the smallest case. A few people also said the hands are too short, but actually 
I didn't notice that at all. I have looked at the original watch. They do appear to be fractionally longer on the original watch. And the bezel inset is a high polished finish on the original. It's a sort of matte finish, but I actually prefer this high polished finish. And there were a couple of remarks referenced to it being 40 mil and not 39 millimeters like the original watch. But again, that survey said the most popular watch size was 40 millimeters. And so you can't blame them for making a 40 mil watch because that's what most people want. But there's no denying the subject that drew the most comments is the price and where San Martin are taking their prices. Now that survey did reveal that people were prepared to pay an extra $50 or so for a watch from San Martin with a PT5000 in it over an NH35. I think they are asking for a little bit more than an extra $50 for this one. And I'm really, really torn when it comes to San Martin prices because their build quality is so good that I think they can justify these prices. But that survey also clearly pointed out that there is a reluctance from buyers to spend over a certain amount of money on a watch from AliExpress. So I guess my response to people having an issue with the price of this watch would be, I do think it's worth the money. I'm just not convinced it will sell in huge numbers because of that reluctance from people to commit to spending micro brand money and entry level Swiss watch money on a watch from AliExpress and I think that's a real shame. Maybe San Martin need to break away from AliExpress and become a fully fledged micro brand. Maybe then they will get the recognition and respect that they deserve from, I think, everybody. Okay, so I still wanna answer two questions. Is this the best watch San Martin have ever made? It's not my favorite, but I do think it's the best. I think it's the best watch I've ever reviewed from San Martin. I do prefer the 38 mil vintage diver still, but that's mainly down to its size. If this was a smaller watch like that 38 mil vintage diver, I suspect this would be my favorite. And the other question I want to answer is, is this watch worth the money? I do think it is, I really, really do. If I was in a position where I wanted to add a watch like this to a collection, I might not jump straight onto AliExpress and buy it immediately without any thought. But if I knew of the quality of this watch, then I suspect I would be persuaded to part with $326 for the PT5000 version. And I may even be persuaded to part with the extra money to buy this watch with a Swiss made Salita SW200. And I am starting to wonder if I spend a bit more time with this watch, whether or not it will actually knock that 38 mil vintage diver off of top spot when it comes to my favorite San Martin watch, because I have thoroughly enjoyed wearing this. I think the fact that it's only 11 millimeters thick really does help with that extra dial diameter. And like I said already, it's the same weight as that 38 mil vintage diver. Wow, okay guys, and please let me know what you think of this watch in the comments section. Um, I've already had lots of feedback on my second channel. I like watches too when I posted my unboxing, but I want to know more. I want to know what you guys think of it. All right guys, thanks again for watching. I do really, really appreciate it. Take care. You'll see me again soon.